Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a systems of equations by either substitution or elimination. And I'm going to do that through four different examples. I'm also going to share with you my favorite four tips that you can use to solve a systems of equations on your own. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and do this. Now, before I give you the first example, typically students have trouble identifying should they solve the system using substitution or should they use elimination? So that's going to bring me up to tip number one. All right, so tip number one is basically saying when you have a system of equations, look to see the coefficients of your variable. And a lot of the times when the coefficient of a variable is one or negative one, then you're gonna wanna use substitution. That's not always the case, um, but you will see a lot of times substitution is going to be the preferred method. So let me go and show you how that works in our first example. Okay, so in this first example, you can see we have um, two equations, right? We have y equals 2 thirds x minus one, as well as y equals negative 2x plus 7. Now the interesting thing about this is going to my tip, you can see that the variable y has a coefficient of 1 for both of these equations. So this might bring up my idea of like, may I should look to use substitution. Now the interesting thing is y equals this expression as well as y equals that expression. Those are not the same expressions. And the reason why that is the case or why that can be the case here is because we don't know the value of x. And obviously to solve a system of equations, that's what we were trying to do is identify the value of x and y that is going to um, satisfy the solution. All right, so how are we gonna use substitution in this case? Well, since y is equal to this expression as well as y is equal to that expression, we can just set each expression equal to one another and it would look something like this. Okay, so again, you can see that, well, y is equal to here, right? And then y is equal to that expression. So you can see how that makes sense, right? Y is equal to y, of course. Well, that means this expression is that equal to that expression. Now, to go ahead and solve for x, what we're gonna need to do is use some inverse operations. Okay, so I had a couple things going on here. You can recognize that we had an x on the left and the right side, as well as a fraction. So the first thing I did is I got the one over to the other side. And then to get rid of the fractions, I just multiplied everything times three. Now it's very important that you multiply everything times three. And you can see I made a mistake there that I had to go ahead and correct. But you can see I multiplied three times every single term. By doing that, that eliminated my fraction here. So now I just have a, a linear equation where I have a variable on both sides. So I added the 6x to get them to be on the same side, and then I divided by 8 to get x equals 3. Now again, when x equals 3, that satisfies both of these equations. And we'll be able to verify that in just a second. But again, remember, when you're solving a system of equations, we're looking for the variable x as well as variable y that satisfies the solution. Now the nice thing about using substitution when you have a coefficient that has one or negative one is I already have these two equations are solved for y. So all I need to do is plug in three into the equation to solve for y. Now, preferably we want to avoid the fraction, right? So I'm gonna plug three into this equation, but you'll see, we'll do a little mental check that you'd get the exact same answer if you were to plug it in here as well. But let's go ahead and plug x equals to three, which again is another substitution, right? x is equal to three, so I can replace x with three. So you can see that y is going to equal one. So therefore the values of x and y that satisfy this solution is going to be a solution point here of three comma one. Now let's just go and check our work. If we did want to use this equation, three times two thirds is gonna be two, two minus one is one. So you can see it wouldn't really matter which one of these equations that we could have chose. So for this next example, you can see we have a variable that has a coefficient of one. Now, so we're gonna to wanna to use substitution, but the problem is that one, last time it was y, and we were kinda of used to like when y equals, that's something we're kinda of familiar with. And then also, this is not solve for x. But again, going back to tip number one, substitution is probably gonna be our ideal method in this case. So what that brings me up is to is tip number two. So a lot of times when we're doing our first example, students always wanna solve for y. You know, it kinda of goes back to our graphing. They're used to graphing and basically y equals for slope intercept form. But when you're doing substitution, it doesn't matter if it's a, b, x, or y. 
we're looking for whatever variable has a coefficient one. And in this case, it's going to be the x. So that is going to be the variable that I am going to want to isolate. Now, the nice thing is I can easily isolate this x here just by using some simple inverse operations. So if I had this over here, I'd have 2y plus x equals 4. Now, to solve for x, you can just go ahead and subtract a 2y on both sides. Now I have the expression x is equal to 4 minus 2y. Now going back to our idea of substitution, I can replace x with the expression 4 minus 2y, right? They are equal to one another, so therefore I could use one or the other. So I look at this second expression and I say, well, this one has 2 times x. Instead of having 2 times x, why don't I have this as 2 times what x is equal to, which is also 4 minus 2y. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that expression with our new expression for x. Okay, so now you can see that basically all I did is I replaced x with our expression. And again, where I got that expression was basically just taking my first equation and isolating the variable x, right? And again, I'm not changing the equation. I'm just rearranging everything so therefore the x would be isolated. And again, that was easy because from tip number one told us that our, when our coefficient was one or negative one, we'd want to use um, substitution. So from here, you can see I have another equation, but now I have with two variables y. So now I just need to use my inverse operations as well as simplifying to solve for y. Okay, so nice little solution here we got a y is equal to zero. So you can see what I did is I applied this derivative property, right? And then I combined my terms with y, and then I was able to use my inverse operation. So it's always important that you want to get rid of your parentheses and then simplify by combining like terms so therefore you can solve. Now again, remember that what we're doing is we're looking for the values of y and x that make this equation true because that's what we covered in our last video about solving a system of equations by graphing. We're looking for that intersection point. So we're looking for the x as well as for the y coordinate that makes this system true. Now again, the nice thing about using substitution in this case, or at least isolating this variable, is I already know y, right? y satisfies this system. Now I just need to find x. Well, I can plug zero in for y for either one of these equations and solve for x. The nice thing about using substitution here is I already have x isolated. So I'm just gonna plug zero in for x here. I'm sorry, zero in for y and solve for x. And you can see x is equal to four. Um, so therefore, I now have a solution point of four comma zero. And if I was gonna go back to that last video um, for solving a system of equations, you would see that that would be the intersection point of the two equations. So looking into this example number three, um, you can see we have a one here. So that's actually not a coefficient of any of one of our variables. If you look at each one of our variables, none of them have a coefficient of one or negative one. So in this case, using substitution is not going to be an ideal method. We could, like last example, solve one of these variables, you know, isolate them by themselves and then plug them into the other expression. However, if you kind of do a little forward thinking, you would see that that's gonna bring us some fractions and probably not some, some nice work to be able to get there. So we're gonna to wanna to look into our other method, which is going to be elimination. But to really understand how to use elimination for this problem, we wanna go and take a look at tip number three. Okay, so you can see on this problem, it looks confusing because everything is not nice, right? In that first example, y was equals, y was equals. It made things kind of nice. We kind of you know, could see that symmetry with, uh, between those two equations. But in this case, you can see we have x on the right side and then the other one has an x and a y. So just like using my inverse operations, I can rearrange this second equation so therefore that my variables line up. And that's exactly what tip number three is gonna allow us to do is basically align or arrange your variables so, and your numbers so everything is the same vertically. Okay, so just by using some inverse operations and just rearranging everything, you can see that now I'm going to obtain a negative two x plus five y is equal to one. Now, the important thing here is you can see that my variable x has the same coefficient. Well, at least the same absolute value. They have two and negative two, right? Now, what we can do, the process of elimination is basically combining your two equations to eliminate a variable. And we're not really eliminating a variable. What we are doing is we're getting the coefficient to be zero. Because I think you guys would agree if zero times x is always equal to zero. 
So to do elimination, we're either going to look into adding our two equations or subtracting our two equations. So when we have the same value, but one is positive, one is negative, all we simply need to do for elimination is combine the two equations by adding. All right, and the nice thing is by tip number three, now that I have everything arranged, I can now just say 2x minus or plus a negative 2x is 0x. 3y plus 5y is 8y, and 7 plus 1 is going to be an 8. Now again, obviously, 0x is just 0, right? So we have 8y is equal to 8, and now I can just solve. Now remember, 1 is just going to be part of the solution, right? We need to find the value for y and x that makes this system true. So now what I'm going to do is plug the 1 into one of my equations. But again, it kind of comes difficult. Like, which equation am I going to plug it into? Does it matter? And if you recall from that first example, it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and plug 1 into either one of the two equations. And again, for simplicity, I'm just going to choose the top equation, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so now you can go ahead and see that when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1, that both of these, that this system is going to be satisfied. That means by plugging in 2 equals x and y equals 1 into both of these equations is going to make both equations true. And if you were to graph them, that would be the solution point. So we can write this as a solution point 2, comma, 1. So as we get into our last example here, this one doesn't look that much fun. You can see that this example is not going to be that much fun because we can't use substitution. Well, we could, but we don't want to use substitution because none of our variables are isolated. We do see that our variables are aligned, which is nice. However, we just can't add or subtract the equations to get 0 as a coefficient. So what we're going to want to do is actually create two new equations that have the same coefficients. And if you recall, from example number one, when we had to solve with the fraction, I got rid of the fraction by multiplying that equation by, this, by a scalar multiple. And that idea is very important because if you multiply an equation by a number, meaning multiply everything by that same number, you're not actually changing the solution to the equation. So since none of our variables have the same coefficients, that's what I'm going to want to do. Now, what do you multiply by? Well, again, that brings us to our tip number four. So tip number four is telling us to eliminate with the LCM. And what that means is the least common multiple. So we can eliminate the variable x. We could eliminate the variable y. Again, I'm using the word eliminate, but really just get a coefficient to be zero. But it doesn't matter which one we want to eliminate. But this tip tells us to use the least common multiple. Now, when I'm talking about the least common multiple, I'm not talking about positives and negatives. I'm just going to treat each and every coefficient as positive. So we have the least common multiple between 2 and 5. And again, that is basically asking you, what is the smallest number that 2 and 5 both evenly divide into? And you can list out the multiples if you want to, but hopefully you can realize that number is 10. And then we look at the least common multiple of, again, 3 and 2. Don't worry about the negative at this moment. And the least common multiple here of 3 and 2 is going to be 6. Well, since 6 is smaller than 10, I am going to decide to eliminate my variable y. So how does this work? Well, what we want to do is we want to get our coefficients to be exactly the same. So since my LCM, in this case, is 6, the least common multiple of my variable is 6, Again, disregard these negative and positive for a second. Just focus on the coefficients. What do I need to do to multiply to get a 3 to be 6? Well, that is I need to multiply by 2. Now again, we're multiplying an equation, so we need to multiply everything by 2. And when doing that, I now get a new equation, 4x minus 6y equals 10. Now I move on to the next equation. And if I have a coefficient of 2, and I need to get that to be my LCM of 6, I'm going to multiply by 3. And again, distribute everything by 3. Now you can see I have an equation where I have the coefficient is 6, negative 6y and positive 6y. Now they're not exactly the same. Like they both have a negative 6 and a 6, right? But again, our goal is to get it to be 0. So like in our last example, when we have the coefficient 1 is positive, 1 is negative of the same number, we can just add our two equations. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And you can see here that now I have 19x equals 38, right? Because 0y is now eliminating that variable for y. And go ahead and solving, 
I have x is equal to two. Now we have some options here because again, for our solution point, we need to be able to find the y coordinate as well. So I could plug the two into this equation, that equation, that equation, or that equation. But let's keep things simple and I'm just gonna plug it into this first example. Okay, so now you can see guys, um, just by using my inverse operations, again, I replaced this x with a two and then went ahead and multiplied, got my numbers to the same side, and went ahead and solved. So now I have an equation of two and three, which is going to be our solution. And again, if you were to graph these in their standard form, they wouldn't be that much fun, but their intersection point of those two equations would be a two and a three. All right, on to our bonus tips. So I have two little tips that I did not bring up yet um, in my instruction that I wanted to save to the very, very end. And the last one kind of corresponds to our last examples. When we're finding multiples, a lot of times students get hung up with the positive and the negatives. Now, I always like to avoid making mistakes as best I can. And one of the mistakes that I will make is when I am subtracting, dealing with negative numbers or with fractions. So if I have an expression that looked like this, so if I have an example like this, I could use substitution, right? But I also recognize all I need to do is multiply this top equation by two and then they'll be the same. But for my tip number five, so for tip number five, then it basically says add instead of subtract. Because if I multiply everything by two, right, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have a systems of equation that's gonna be a two x plus seven y equals 20 and a 2x minus 3y equals 14. And you might say, well, no big deal, right? But again, if I need to get my x to have a zero, I'm gonna to need to subtract these two equations. And what happens is when you choose subtraction over addition, then students start to make mistakes subtracting the y's and carrying over this negative. So what I prefer to do is instead of multiplying by a two, I'm gonna multiply by a negative two. Meaning, I always want my coefficients, one to be positive and one to be negative. It doesn't always have to be this case, but this is a way to avoid making some mistakes. And when I do it this way, I get a... Now you can see that I have my two equations here that I, when I just add them up together, which again, usually adding is gonna be easier than subtracting, um, I will go ahead and eliminate my variable, co this coefficient here, and it's a lot easier to add these two up as well as these two up as well. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, four examples as well as five tips to help you solve a systems of equations using substitution and elimination. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you need more examples, I have plenty of more examples I have worked out throughout the years in my playlist noted in the description. I also have a free quiz that you can go now go ahead and try to test your skills to see how well prepared you are to solve a systems of equations on your own. Wish you guys the best and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.